Welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a great week here. It is... July 18th, 1998. It is. Um, Carol. Mm-hmm. You like soap operas, don't you? It depends because um, we watch lately 90210. 90210 has been pissing me off. But yes, I do. Why do you ask? Uh, I just realized today I was going through the newspaper. Mm-hmm. They have soap summaries. <laughs> oh. they have. It's kind of like what we do almost, honestly. But they have soap summaries from all the different, like, All My Children, Another <gasps> World, As the World Turns. Oh, my gosh. Bold and the Beautiful Days of Our Lives. You know, when I was a little kid, mm-hmm. I started watching All My Children with my mom. Really? And she worked during the day and I went to school during the day. So we would record it on the VCR and then watch it together at night. <laughs> well, here's All My Children. Erica tells Myrtle that she really doesn't love Mike, Erica, and Mike. Oh, sorry. She really doesn't love Mike. Erica and Mike join forces to help Erica win the business deal she needs. The two seal the plan with a kiss. Ooh. Lee vows to marry or to make Adam pay for all he has done. Lee then then sabotages the boiler at holidays. Camille successfully escapes from Lee's clutches. A feuding Jake and Allie attempt to discuss their upcoming wedding. An urgent message from Albert forces Haley to go to holidays. This is just a bunch of gibberish words for <laughs> someone that's never seen this. Like, you recognize it as English words, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? There's an explosion at holidays, and many citizens of Pine Valley are trapped inside. Dr. David praises Allie's work on the injured burn victims. After much thought, Brooke decides that leaving the country is the best thing she can do. (laughs) It's always the best thing you can do. (laughs) Probably. Oh, my goodness. Now, my mom used to watch Days of Our Lives, so I might understand a little more of this. Okay. Sammy, I know who that is, reports to the police that Lucas is driving while he's drunk. He is then pulled over. Kate walks in on Franco and Sammy kissing. Ooh. Franco finally comes to the realization that Sammy is a vindictive person. Marlena catches Mike and Carrie kissing. (laughs) A lot of kissing, (laughs) catching, But decides not to say anything to them about it. Mike vows, this is the same Mike from uh, All My Children, (laughs) vows to never again let such a kiss happen again. That is a terrible sentence. Yeah, it is. In Off the Wall Vivian ends up leave, or leading all of Salem in a square dance at the barbecue. <laughs> a frightened Nicole receives a call from Jay demanding hush money. Salem. Is it like Salem, Massachusetts? Like, um, like where the witch trial happened? I don't believe they actually ever say where it is, like what state it's in. But it's it's supposedly an East Coast state, yeah. Okay. I remember the Kaliakuses. They're the ones in charge of like they're the bad guys, mm. like the villains. Uh, Victor Kaliakus. That's Jennifer Aniston's dad. Oh, really? John Aniston. Yeah. Oh, huh, that's cool. You know what else is cool? No. Detroit's Kid Rock is getting hot. <laughs> Isn't that the opposite of cool? Exactly. Uh, prepare for booty to be shaken. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Things are heating up for Kid Rock, the Detroit musician whose eclectic debut album for Atlantic Records lands in stores August 18th. He's been a regular guest at MTV's Beach House this month. Apparently, an adopted fave of VJ Carson Daly. Daly? VJ? Yeah, vi- uh, video jockey instead of disc mm. jockey. And you can look for more on-air appearances this week. A theme song he recorded for last month's X Games aired on Spin and ABC's Wide World of Sports. I know it's ESPN. And was <laughs> showcased during the finals of the Extreme Sports event. 
Red Wings fans know Kid Rock from the opening rap from his independent early morning stoned pimp album, which became a staple at Joe Louis Arena last season. Yeah. Uh, ain't no party like a Detroit party because a Detroit party don't stop. Truth. Uh, concert goers at last month's 89X birthday bash saw him on stage with label mate Sugar Ray and fans can look for him at the Warped Tour in Pontiac. On July 22nd, his personal itinerary isn't the only busy thing. It used to be easy to toss the hip-hop rocker label onto Kid Rock, born born Bob Ritchie. Uh, Anybody from the area knows that his dad uh, owns a bunch of dealerships um, in Mount Clemens. But listening to preliminary mixes of tracks from the upcoming Devil Without a Cause, you quickly realize the kid is extending the sonic perimeters. The colorful sounds are still infused with the old-school party vibe that marked Kid Rock's successful self-releases, but they're also permeated with an appropriately heavy Motor City rock ethic. A little bit of everything. Drunk funk. Hardcore. (laughs) (laughs) Hardcore country. Grimy blues. No such thing. It's Run DMC meets Leonard Skinnerd. Kid Rock tells Dally on MTV. Okay. Daily. Daily? D A L Y. I don't know. Johnny Carson (laughs) Daly. Sure. We're cool. We watch MTV. Oh, my. Anybody who has to say they're cool or not cool? (sighs) So we're not cool? No. We don't watch MTV? I don't know, but we're not cool. Well, you don't watch MTV, obviously, because you don't know who Carson (laughs) Daly is. I watch it sometimes. You don't you don't frequent the beach house. No, I do not. You don't go to uh, MTV's uh, Spring Break Bash or whatever the fuck they call it. <laughs> spring Break House. I don't know. Anyway, last story before I have something special for you, and then we talk something special, more special than yes, the soaps. Yes, I'm, I'm all I'm all a flutter. It's Shark Week. It it is. Um. <laughs> 9 p.m. Uh, well, it's going to be Shark Week, August 9th through 16th. Okay. Uh, Discovery Channel. My, what big sharp teeth they have. Discovery's annual Shark Fest is back with a schedule. Do you like Shark Fest? No, do you? Yeah, I kind of get into it. I mean, I don't mind watching, like, the occasional thing about sharks, but, like, Heavy Shark Week, like, meh. Heavy Shark Week? <laughs> like, I don't... I don't heavy hearts this week. I don't need sharks announce. all day, every day. I just don't. What about Mr. Bill? Who's Mr. Bill? Oh, my God. You never watched Saturday Night Live with Mr. Bill? I don't really like oh, Saturday no, Night Mr. Live. Bill. I watch it when you make me, but I don't like it. <laughs> oh, on, on Fox Family Channel, there's going to be a, a Mr. Bill special. Ooh, that sounds family appropriate. Yeah. It's a guy. It's a it's a claymation person being killed, <laughs> being destroyed. That's what it is. Awesome. By Mr. Hand, and not the <laughs> one from Fast Times at Richmond High. All right, here's your surprise. I thought to myself, self, this movie is a lot about a lot of people in love, but not maybe really in love, more in lust. Okay. So instead of, uh, you know, uh, massive love or whatever, it's massive lust. Oh, no. This week, <laughs> which is when we read from the wild at hearts. Yay. Section. So these are these are the off the wall people. This All isn't right. just like I'm a boy looking for a girl. <laughs> it's like I'm a weirdo looking for a place to put my cock. Thirty one year old single white male boy toy. Ew. On shelf for Christmas in July. <laughs> okay. Perfect stocking stuffer. What is this guy's deal? Females only. What is this guy's deal? He's obsessed with Christmas. Like, seriously, though, like, He wait. thought of all the Christmas puns and didn't want to do it. <laughs> and he's like, I, I don't want to wait till December. I can't sit on this until December. <laughs> they have Christmas in July sales, right? Sure, sure. So I can, too. Perfectly normal. What do you think? Yeah, he's perfectly normal. Um, I think that anything that makes me have visions of an elf doesn't... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't spark the desire. No, you're not. You're not into elf. Nah. Stuff. What about a fine, unattached single white male, thirty-one, educated, employed, seeking by white female? Let's build our love our way. 
We can have it all. <laughs> so you want a threesome, sir? That's what he's looking for. He says, I'm a single white male, 31. You need to be bi. And uh, you can have a girlfriend, too, I guess. Let's I guess. build our love arm a pyramid. Maybe what he's looking to build. Yeah, maybe he wants to uh, have a you know, multiple love relationship, whatever oh. that's called. More than one. Poly. Yeah. yeah. Poly love. <laughs> po love. Uh, about your fulfillment. Sounds like... Is that how it starts? What the fuck? Sounds like a like a mailman or something like that. <laughs> about your, uh, your letter. About your fulfillment. Have more needs than one man can meet? Oh, no. Understanding single white male, 44, could be ladies... Alternate boyfriend, fulfilling needs slash desires. Oh, my. That's no, no. Oh, no, you don't think so? But do you think there are women out there that need that? No. Looking for an alternate boyfriend. I mean, I don't think that women who have a high sex drive get a pass to, like, cheat. I mean, no. We're not making judgments on these people. Okay? Sure, yeah, that's what we do. That's like the whole point. You are so you just so against cheating. Yeah, aren't like, you? Every, yes, I am. But like, I mean, I'm a little worried now. No, it's just it's it's. I don't know. It's more fun to play along with them, I guess. But like, yeah, I understand. She doesn't get a pass to have more than one guy. But what I'm saying is, does this guy fill a need, or is this? Only something a guy would want. <laughs> I think it's only something a guy would want. Uh, extremely bi curious. So gay. Well, it's a white couple in their forties. They're extremely bi, extremely bi curious. <laughs> they're on. Um, they're on snowboards going sure. down like a like a five diamond five black diamonds mountain and. Uh, the- the guy's like, sweetie, if the wind's blowing back their hair. Mm-hmm. Sweetie, have you ever been curious about being with a woman? I have. <laughs> We're extremely bi-curious. Uh, white couple, 40s. She's 5'5", five, five, 125 pounds, brown eyes. He's 5'11", 170 pounds, blue eyes. Seeks fit, clean, healthy, bi-white couple or bi- uh, male or female. Okay, so, to 50. so they just want to play with other people. They don't care. Couple or a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter. There's some horny people. I want to know why they think their eye color is the most important part of their description. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's kind of weird. That's true. Like, But they won't answer if they don't know I have baby blue eyes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, what do I got? I got one more, I think. Yeah, I got one more, Carol. Normal guy. <laughs> Normal guy in boring but convenient relationship. Looking for bi female or couple to experience passion and fun. Wow. He's just a normal guy. Looking to have sex with a couple. A normal guy in a in a boring but convenient relationship. I.e. I'm unemployed. And she pays for everything. (laughs) Right? That's what it is, right? Yeah, probably. It's just his mom. Ew. 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 But he doesn't want He brings the the swingers over. He doesn't want to be like, I live with my mom. It's (laughs) just like, it's my old lady. (laughs) She's going to let us play downstairs, though. (laughs) Did you bring the dice? Oh my. Yeah. What are they playing? Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, whatever. Whatever <laughs> dorky games you guys play. What? You're a swinger, right? <laughs> I thought all people that played uh, role playing games were into that shit. No. No? No. Oh, all right. A lot of them are, though. Are they really? Yeah. They're, I mean, like, the people that the people that I have played with tend to be yeah, a little different. It might, it might just be you, though, right? No? Okay. All right. I see. I thought you, you had just attracted those type of people. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. I see what you're saying. You, you're saying not necessarily they're into swinging, but they're just kind of off mentally. Well, and they're, you know, lecherous and like to party. I mean, that's... Nice. <laughs> that should be on every Dungeons and Dragons book they make. 
lecherous and like to party. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Right. Exactly. Oh, my God. I need to be their marketing campaign. The, 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 <laughs> this thing would be so much more popular if I marketed for Dungeons and Dragons. Well, get on the phone. Extreme Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Make it happen. Are you an extreme bi-curious person? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, anytime I hear extremely bi curious, I'm just thinking like somebody in this relationship is not straight. Well, I yeah, I don't I don't understand the extremely bi is that is that supposed to be like we're fucking desperate. I right, mean obviously we're so they, horny. Obviously they were because it was a couple or either a guy or a girl. They just want somebody else. They're sick of fucking each other. Are you a piece of matter? <laughs> <laughs> then please <laughs> message us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, uh, speaking of messaging us, someone messaged us to to see this movie. No. Yeah. Someone from the movie theater called us up and said, come see this movie. Okay. For free and early. <laughs> so we went to the Detroit premiere. <laughs> no, just like a, like, a, you know, I don't want to brag, but sometimes we get invited to go to... Yeah. To critics' events because people were our our voice is starting to get known amongst people the critics actually circles. care a little bit what we have to say. It's kinda weird. So we went and saw there's something about Mary. Yeah. Do you think this movie would be as popular if it was there's something about Myrtle? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mary really is the perfect name for uh just, you know, Generic woman. Yeah. Mary could be anybody. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Mary could be matronly. Mary could be hot. It's like, it's a very generic name. Well, I don't think the Mary in this movie was very generic. Do you? The Mary in this movie is Cameron Diaz. Yeah, I is mean. she Spanish? No. She doesn't look Spanish in any way, but where does Diaz come from? Well, maybe like somebody in her family generations back was, you know, from a Spanish speaking country. But I don't, and they just kept the name somehow. They just, they just kept trying to breed it out. <laughs> to the Get point, her as white as possible. To the point they produced the blonde-haired, blue-eyed exactly. Aryan poster That's child. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's almost like it was purposeful. Yeah. Diaz family, what are you doing? <laughs> Maybe it's just her stage name, and it's not even her real name. Yeah, I have no idea, honestly. Um, but her name that we're going to call her is Cameron Diaz or Mary. Um, and this movie, uh, I liked it. Of course you did. I don't, you didn't like it. No. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not going to say there was no funny parts or that like it's a waste of time or something, you know, it's not terrible, but Mm. uh, it has that humor that I don't like. There's something about Carol. (laughs) There's something about my humor brain that's broken. So, Okay. This movie, I think, begins with... I think it begins in a good place. So sure. it begins with a guy playing guitar and a drummer drumming. And they're singing what I guess is a title song. <laughs> it was but so they're weird. singing like, uh, you know, uh, there's something about Mary. You know, they're singing a song about her mm-hmm. and about Ben Stiller having a crush yeah. on her. They pop up throughout the movie. It's Awesome or not. What the fuck? I think it establishes at the very beginning, it sets the mood. It gets us, it it sets the tone that we're in a silly universe that, you know, it's not completely devoid from reality, but it's it's a silly universe. Sure. Uh, almost a cartoony type universe. And they got and, the cartoon Cameron Diaz. Yeah, and she's the perfect one. I started looking at her today. <laughs> Not today, I mean. I started looking at her when we watched the movie. Right. Obviously, I had to because she was in the movie. But I started to really examine her and her mouth and her eyes and stuff like and that. And you finally saw it? Because of how you keep saying it. Like, she looks like a cartoon. Her mouth's too big and everything. Her mouth is big. It's really monstrously it's, big. It, <laughs> It takes it looks, up half her face. It looks like she could smile and split. In- <laughs> yes. And she has it's, smile lines. It's kind. She smiles a lot. She's a happy person. It's kind of a Pac-Man mouth. Yes. But 
I still think she's pretty. And I still think she's way prettier than Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow looks like a normal human woman that no, ups no, her no. hotness level above the cartoon. And <laughs> she has no boobs. Yeah, she, she's not. Yes, she she does not. Have, she's not my type. She does not have the body type that I like. That is correct. I mean, she was kind of cute when she had long hair in the very beginning. But I, I hated her hair. And her giant mouth and her tiny breasts. I'm sorry, Cameron Diaz. She she would not check any of my boxes. I think it's fine that she they cast her in this movie uh, to be the object of everyone's affection. I you know I I'm not saying that they couldn't have gotten someone that it makes more sense. Selma Hayek. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Although that's a different movie, I guess. Probably. Why you don't think she can be funny? She was hilarious in the... Uh... No, the problem is that Cameron Diaz isn't really funny in this movie. Cameron Diaz... This, that's, this is one of my criticisms of the movie. Okay. Cameron Diaz doesn't really do anything in this movie at all, other than exist and be hot. She delivers some lines, but she is not given hardly anything to do comedically. Hmm, She's, that's true. She's like the straight man. She talks about, she gives exposition about herself and her own personality so that Ted, Ben Stiller, knows the things to do and say to win her heart. And we know that he's doing the right things and saying the right things to win her heart at the end of the movie. But that's really all she does. And I feel like she's a more talented actress and maybe even a more talented comedic actress, although I haven't seen her in, she was in... Uh, the My mask. best friend's wedding. Oh yeah, she was infinitely better in that. Although there, she was also kind of a Mar- Marilyn Monroe type, bumbling, you know, like mm-hmm. like person in that too. But yeah, I don't. I really don't think they give her enough to do. Hmm. The comedy is focused almost entirely on Ben Stiller, um, Matt Damon, or not Matt Damon, Matt Dillon, and. Uh, Matt Damon. I'm in this movie? Um, <laughs> and uh, the guy that plays Skippy or whatever the fuck his name yeah. was. Kenny? Yeah. What was his name? I don't I don't even remember. I, I... Interesting query, Mary. Um, <laughs> he drove me nuts. I hated that character. I didn't like him either. I didn't really like Matt D- Matt Dillon, though, was good. I think Matt Dillon was probably the best thing about the movie. <laughs> Matt Dillon's the one who was the private eye. Yeah, Pat yeah. Healy, yeah. I think he was probably the best thing. He he was the funniest. He was also the one that was in the, the uh, you know, um, Nev Campbell and Denise Richards uh, make out. Oh. Same guy. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, they start the movie out there where with... We're being introduced to the fact that we're in a weird universe. Sure. Then they go to Ted looking weird with braces and a f- afro and stuff like 70s that. 70s teenager. Although it's 1985. It says that it's the beginning <laughs> of the movie. But it looks like the 70s, doesn't it? Uh, a little. I mean, the 70s and 80s, I guess, kind of share some general... It similarities looks, of aesthetics. It looks more early 80s than 1985 to me. Yeah. Like some holdover stuff from the 70s. It looks like the original Friday the 13th yeah, type of clothing. Exactly. And that came out in 1980. So, yeah, it looks more early 80s to me. But anyway, and I think Ben Stiller was probably a teenager closer to the early 80s. I think he's playing younger than he is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's older than Cameron Diaz. You know what? Never mind. Finish. What you're no, saying. go ahead. See, here's the thing. The reason I told you to finish is because the thought that popped into my head just popped like a little balloon and floated away. So, oh no! There's ahead. something about Carol. <laughs> she can't think. Um. So, it's he. He's like you know, when I was whatever. I was in love when I was 16 or whatever. Mm-hmm. I was in love, and then he asks this other girl to the prom. Was he supposed to have been in love with her and then he falls in love with? I don't know. Because the transition from him asking her out and then talking to Mary 
and all of a sudden everything's about Mary is very abrupt. It is. Yeah, he didn't really need to ask that other girl out, except maybe to establish that he's a dork. And he was being rejected. And, and maybe that's all it was. Maybe it's he wasn't in love with her. He, it was just somebody he thought he could ask the problem. Right. She might say yes. So, yeah, that could be it. But I, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be a joke. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a bait and switch where it's like, I was in love. It's not Cameron Diaz, though. It's this girl or like whatever. Or, mm. or I'm talking to someone that's I'm not in love with her or whatever. But it doesn't resonate. No. They should have showed her first. And then had him ask her out and, he, you know, be like, he could have he could have had a notebook with like a bunch of women's names <laughs> on it and all checked off. And like he checks that one off. It's like the last one on the list. Yeah, that would have been good. Then that establishes what a dork he is. Yeah. And, you know, then we were rooting for him or whatever because we were to the underdog. But so then like when he saves her brother or whatever, because he her brother is like mentally handicapped. Down syndrome probably, right? He didn't look like he had Down syndrome. Oh, okay. He just looks like he's slow. I don't understand enough about mental handicaps to know. Well, there's usually some facial, you know, features. That Down, syndrome's Down syndrome is one of the one so. that has genetic. It's a genetic, and it has yeah. genetic, like a certain genetic look. Yeah. Okay, I got you. But yeah, so he's slow, and he's looking for his baseball, and he ends up getting in a fight, and and Ben Stiller saves him. Mm-hmm. But I don't get why that's enough, because. He she is, liked him anyway. But why? That's my question. She's supposed to be, like, like I know I say some shit, but I mean, she's supposed to be pretty. Like, she is pretty-ish. She obviously is ben Stiller. doing better socially than him. And, yeah, he defended her brother. Is that really it? Is that enough to, like, win her affection? Here's the thing. It's not only, it, not only does it not make sense based on what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense based on what we know of her personality later in the movie. Later in the movie, she's sitting around with comedian Sarah Silverman. That, I'm just assuming that's who that is. And other friends. And she's Saturday, former Saturday Night Live member Sarah Silverman. <laughs> and she's they're talking about what she wants in a guy while Matt Dillon listens. And she's like, I want a manly guy. I want a guy that, like, you know, does this or does that. Like, you know, and she's talking about, like, all the macho stuff she wants out of a guy. Mm -hmm. When And then later, when she's talking to someone, Magda or something like that, I think, she's like, oh, you should have seen him in high school. He was so cute with his braces. I had a thing for braces and, and, and the hair and everything. Like, he looks, he was so shy and dorky and he was just so cute. And it's like. There are women that like that kind of guy. Right. And I like it doesn't matter what you look like. Your type can be, you know, dorky, socially awkward guys. Sure. So it's somewhat plausible that she could like him. She knew his name. So it seemed like she already kind of liked him. Just because she knew his name? No, and she asked him out to the prom right away. Like, it seems like we're being dropped in media reyes or whatever. Where... They have an established relationship, not like a friendship or anything, but they've shared classes. She knows who he is, and maybe she's always kind of liked him. And he stood up and sh- for her brother, and she was like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, he's even cooler than I thought or whatever. Like, I like him even more um, and decided to ask him to the prom. But women that like that kind of guy don't usually then all of a sudden be like, I want a manly guy. Yeah. That's true. those are different extremes. Yeah. And I, you know, it's possible at one point it's it's vaguely mentioned that she changes her mind a ton. Hmm. And that she's very mercurial. So maybe that's part of that too. Maybe. I don't know. That makes I mean that makes some sense. But that kind of bothered me. Where where cuz I you know the, those things contradict each other, so yeah. that kind of bothered me a little bit. And but it also, was many years later. I understand, but it also makes me think that not having consistency in her character means that the writers didn't really care that much about her character. Yeah, she's almost a MacGuffin. Yeah, she's almost just a fucking object to be won in this movie. Yeah, and and at the end when he does win, 
That seems weird, too. It also seems like, can we even trust it? Like, are they going to stay together? I don't know. This is one of those romantic comedies where I don't know that I have any faith in the strength of this relationship at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I The whole thing is weird. The whole, like, like I said, I don't like the movie. I don't like the humor that much. Um, I don't think the characters made sense. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, there were some things that made me chuckle, but... I So, there were... There's there were some things I didn't love because I'm not huge on gross out humor, and there was there was a lot of gross out humor in it. I mean, they completely lost me with the worst scene in the movie, where he zips his genitals. No, oh, where he's playing with his genitals. Oh yeah, and it's hanging from his ear. Oh god, it's so gross. Um, and then the crowd erupted though when they show her. On the date, and her hair is like stiff up. It's disgusting. It it was that was kind of funny. It made me want to vomit my popcorn back up. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that you had that reaction. I thought that was kind of funny. As a man, that zipper scene is the that's the hardest. That's thing. horrifying. So, the sound too. Whoever was in charge of the sound design, I mean, <laughs> I guess good job, but. I have fucking nightmares now. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Like, I don't know how. If I mean, is it even possible that that could happen? I'm sure it is, yeah. But if it did, that another man would look at that and be like, oh, I'm just going to unzip the zipper. No, no, no. Don't even talk about it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, why? It's so stupid. The, the scissors. Scissors. Yeah, cut the pants, like, or, or something like the that. The zipper. Is, the zipper is the problem, not the pants. Rip it open. Like, free the the skin by ripping the, breaking the pants, ripping the zipper apart. That's the obvious move. Don't try to, the when you zip and unzip, they have to come back together, mm. like cling together. Be closed. Open it instead. It would still probably hurt. The cat just fucking busted in here. The door was locked all the way. I didn't even leave it for him. Um, but uh, so like, just do that. Just rip them open. Yeah, that would have been better. But anyway, um, so he wants to like he's talking to his therapist who's not listening to him. That also was like. That wasn't funny, really. Like, I don't no. know. There, there, like, there were there were things they attempted that I was like, there to me there weren't a ton of laughs in this movie. Really, I thought you liked the movie. I do like the movie, but it doesn't sound like it. I like the movie, but there the movie has problems. It's not perfect. So it's I'm far from it. Pointing out the problems. Um, but so he's talking to his therapist about Mary. And how he's never gotten over her 13 years later or whatever. And he wants to find her. So Chris Elliott, who I love. And Chris Elliott, I think, is great in this movie. Um, Chris Elliott is very funny. We actually did his his movie, remember? No. Cabin Boy. Oh. Very early on. Okay, yeah, I a, do. He was a fancy I think that lad. was the first movie we did. He was a fancy lad. <sighs> I think it was. I mean, the I think it was our second episode or... Yeah, because the first episode was a review of all the movies from 93. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think his was the first full review of a movie we did. I hate his character. I think his character is so hilarious. And like... He orchestrates the entire movie by essentially just manipulating Ted the entire time. W- Woogie, is his Woogie name? Yeah. Now, wasn't he her high school boyfriend that she broke up with right before prom? Yes, but then I guess they got back together. It wasn't really explained, but I guess they got back together when she went to Princeton, and then uh, they um, they dated in college briefly till she needed to get a um, restraining order against him, which is another thing that doesn't make sense, by the way. He says she moved to Florida with her family after high school, but then she went to Princeton. Princeton's in New Jersey, not Florida. Oh, jeez. 
yeah, a lot of things that don't make sense. So, yeah, I don't I don't really get that. Um but yeah, he his character, if you think about it, his character manipulates the entire movie. Yeah. He's the one that suggests that he find her. He's the Why one. Why did he do that? So he could he find her. So find he could her. find her. Yeah. yeah, because she ran away from him. Right. Uh, he's the one that suggests that he uh, use Pat Healy. He's the one that suggests that he go down there. Like, he's like, he he manipulates the entire situation so that he can can get to Mary. Suggesting that he go down there seemed a step too far because that just put another obstacle in his path. Yeah. Well, I guess, but maybe he just thought that he would fail. I don't know. I don't know. But I want to understand the love boils or whatever he called them. Like, he gets these sores all over his body. He gets nervous or something? I don't know. He's like, he's, go ahead. He's, um, like... He has some sort of physical reaction to how she makes him feel. I don't really understand it, but uh, I don't know. (laughs) Carol's away right now, making sure that the cat doesn't get into uh, things it's not supposed to get into. And she's taking longer than I thought she would. Say something. Hi, sorry. I was building a fort to keep the cat out of the hole in the wall. Yeah, he he break. There's not just a random hole in the wall. It's a a, a closet. Yeah, the the back of the closet is open. It's weird. I don't know why that is. This and, whole room is weird. And the inside of the closet contains a furnace. Yeah. That is shut off. That I don't want him fucking with. So. No, I know, I know, I know. I okay, okay. Just, so everybody understands. I wasn't abandoning the show for no reason. Um. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we didn't blow up. <laughs> it is kind of important. Yeah, I don't get the love boils or anything either. Like, I mean, it's obviously just for physical comedy, but but it was out of nowhere, right? Like, I mean, did it, I miss something? It it builds, it builds, it gets worse and worse as the movie goes on because he's thinking more and more about Mary. It's like he's obsessed with her, and it's like I don't know. It creates this Gross. reaction in his head. <laughs> he does say the the jism scene. He does say something that I think is actually really true. Mm. That um, after a man has cleaned the pipes, mm-hmm. as he says, he's more relaxed and, and you know, in a uh, a better place. It has a clearer head. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I think sense. that's true. I, I, I wanted to ask. Is this a policy you've heard of before, or maybe something that you implemented? It's I, I've never heard of this specific policy before, and it's never something I've done before a date <laughs> or anything like that. But it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. I but almost kind of wish I had before some important dates. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I guess it didn't really hinder me necessarily in anything, but, like, I don't know. Like, who knows? I The... The lady that I was dating before you that was, like, you know, really good and everything. I could have been with her. The fuck? <laughs> I'm just joking. What? What's your face for? Why would you say that? It's a joke. Because, obviously, don't don't pout. <laughs> because, obviously, um, you know, I, I ended up in the best place. Mm-hmm. So, why would I have any regrets? Exactly. And don't you forget it. But no, I mean it's it's an interesting thought. Yeah, I think he shouldn't have done it directly before the date. No, I that don't, that's I the problem. Yeah, I think that's probably not a good. Idea. <laughs> While she's walking up the right. stairs, <laughs> so weird. They um, also, uh, she has a mysterious ex boyfriend, Brett, mm-hmm. who turns out to be. Brett Favre, for no reason, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. There's a football element to this movie. No, it's not for no reason. It's for fantasy fulfillment for the guys on this movie because they get to meet Brett Favre. And it's um, to showcase what she is giving up to choose him. Uh, Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think Brett Favre's married in real life. (laughs) Also, he is not a good actor in any way, shape, or form. No, not really, no. His inclusion in the movie is really just for a weird twist. Yeah. 
I mean, the movie's full of weird twists. It's like if I gave a shit because, like, I don't know. I just, ugh. because it's just constantly like, oh, no, I'm in love with her, but I'm in love with her, but I'm in love with her. But why is anybody fucking in love with her? Why is she so great? I don't know. I mean, she's a doctor. Yeah. I guess that's something. She's a surgeon. And she's nice. And she likes golf. And beer. She is kind of every guy's fantasy, I guess. I mean, not mine, <laughs> but like when you when you think of like a stereotypical, this is every guy's fantasy, it'd probably be somebody like her. She Thin, likes beer. Blonde. She likes beer, golf, football. Yeah, she's attractive and she's got money because she's a fucking successful right. surgeon. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. And the movie takes place in Miami, one of the worst cities in America. What's wrong with Miami? I've never no, been there. No offense, people that live in Miami. I don't. I just don't like Miami. It's crowded and loud and pushy, and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know. One of my friends like says it's their one of their favorite vacation spots. So yeah, well, good for them. But I, I'm not. I, I <laughs> You're not with them. Okay. I don't like Miami. There are <laughs> places in Florida that I that I enjoy going, but Miami's not really one of them. There's too many people. It's too crowded. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, in general, I liked the movie. I was engaged with the story. I think that seven minute abs sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the the roommate? Like her weird roommate? The old lady? Yeah. She was in something else, too. I can't remember her name, but. She's been in other other movies, that roommate. And the scene with the dog. She's fine, I guess. The dog thing, like, I'm not into I'm not into physical comedy that much. Yeah. And it wasn't that funny, like when the dog's supposed to be attacking him and stuff. And yet again, his balls are getting punished. Like why are we so about harming this man's genitalia? Because that's considered funny for some reason like <laughs> genital mutilation and harm hilarious is considered funny when it's a guy sure. um and i don't really know why it's not stuff i find funny but it's it's the old the old adage you know dick jokes and stuff like yeah. that people make them all the time um it's not my type of humor i like a little more of a sophisticated type of humor i'm not so snobby though that there wasn't things in this movie i thought were funny there was there were some funny parts um and I liked it in general. It's not great. It's not the funniest movie I've seen. It's probably not the funniest movie this year. I wouldn't. But it's good. Personally, like, okay, if in the past you've listened to me talk about movies and you're like, no, that movie's hilarious. You're wrong, Carol. Then maybe you like this movie. Yeah. But all the movies I've warned you people away from, this is another one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carol doesn't like mainstream comedies. Carol's comedy... Carol is the biggest comedy snob I think I've ever met. Really? Yes. That's mean. And not not because your com- it's not not being mean. <laughs> not because your comedy is like erudite or whatever. It's because you are probably the most selective comedy person I've ever met. You have a very very specific <laughs> comedy sensibility that deals with like wordplay, sarcasm, Stuff like that. And that's essentially it. And sometimes when we're watching something, I'll laugh and you don't. Yeah. You find some things funny that I don't. It does happen. Yeah. I don't have the worst sense of humor in the world. Just like sometimes. Well, sometimes I feel feel like I have like a really bad sense of humor because I don't find as many things funny as a lot of people. I don't think it's a bad sense of humor. I just think it's a selective sense of humor. Okay. You You have a very narrow spectrum of what you find funny. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this has been our talk about uh, everybody loves Mary. <laughs> everybody loves Mary. What if she had a, uh, what if her brother was like that, though? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might have been funnier. Oh, my goodness. If, uh. What's his name? Brad. The Giants. Brad Garrett was her brother. <laughs> yeah, but he was also mentally handicapped. Mary. That actually might have been funnier, seriously. I think he would, the, he would have played it funnier. The Well, he would have been funnier, yeah. But the um, the backpack scene, or the be- piggyback scene, oh would have God. been hilarious. Well, I that think, would have been a lot funnier. I don't think it would have been possible. 
We would have like, hey, you would have had to like collapse immediately or something. Yeah, like that. but I mean, like when they did that, I really was concerned for him. I'm like, oh, I bet that really did hurt his back. Do you think Ben Stiller's funny? Sometimes I don't think he's that funny. Sometimes he is. He's become a big, big, big star off of this movie, but I think that his dad's funnier. Who's his dad? Jerry Stiller. I don't know who that is. You ever seen a show called Seinfeld? Uh huh. He plays Jerry Seinfeld. What? No, he doesn't. He's George's dad. Okay. That's Ben Stiller's dad. George's dad. I gotcha. Yeah, he's funny. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway, that's the episode, Carol. Okay. Finish it up. So you can write us at latefee1994 at AOL.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Be there or be square. (laughs) And share the tapes with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.